One day, a close friend of mine wanted to recommend an anime to me. He knew I was an avid fan of the slice of life genre, and tried to cater to my tastes by picking his favorite show from this genre, a show called Nichijo, Everyday Life. It's a fast-paced slice-of-life anime about a group of people doing various things in their everyday lives. The appeal of this show comes from how it manages to mix in the wacky and over-the-top anime shenanigans we're so used to into the genre of slice-of-life, which is notoriously known for trying to stay fairly grounded to keep a sense of realism. The show is fast and keeps you on your feet, whilst also somehow retaining that cozy nature slice-of-life anime are known for. Whilst watching this fun show and thoroughly enjoying my experience, during one of the episodes there was a certain scene that caught my attention. It felt so off, so unusual, so out of the ordinary for the normally happy nature of the show, that I couldn't help but pay extra close attention to it. And after a closer inspection of this scene, I realized something about this show that I don't think anyone has ever realized before. And this realization changes everything. And that scene is the elevator scene from episode 8. Around the halfway point of Nichicho's 8th episode, we get the titular elevator scene. It features the three main characters of the show, Yuko, Mio, and Mai, stuck inside of an elevator. It is never explained how they got in the elevator or why they are stuck there in the first place. Already, the scene is strange when compared to the other parts of the show. It doesn't just have one full view shot of the three being stuck inside this elevator like you'd expect, instead there is this strange darkness devouring most of the screen, apart from the bodies and faces of the main characters, who also look unusual. Their eyes are dead, in stark contrast to the lively happy eyes they've had in previous episodes. There's not a trace of emotion or anything behind them, only emptiness. Yuko and Mio are sitting on the opposite sides of each other, slouching over themselves in an almost corpse-like way, whilst Mai lies down. And even though initially Mai's stance seems like just a stylistic choice of not wanting every character in the scene to have the same pose, the true meaning of why Mai is lying down will become evidently clear later. And the truth is horrifying. Back to the happenings of the scene itself, it starts out with Yuko exclaiming how help will never come, allowing the viewer to understand that they've been in here for a long time. It's never explicitly said just how long they've been in the elevator, but considering how hopeless and dead each character looks, it's most likely been days, maybe even weeks. That kind of isolation with no food or water would surely drive anybody to the brink of insanity, even with two other people to socialize with. This hypothetical of the girls having been stuck inside this metal box for far too long gets emphasized in the next few seconds, where after swiftly cutting between the hopeless faces of each girl, Mio exclaims that there is no god, or Buddha. A claim like this is usually only made in situations of desperation, where it feels like no one, not even an omnipotent being, can save you. It is a common feeling shared between people who've gone lost in deserts or snowy mountains. They've clearly pressed a button that should call someone over to help them, but no one showed up. We then cut to parts of the elevator and the faces of the characters, and it is all excruciatingly long, at least for Nichijou standards. Everything in this show happens rapidly. There is hardly any time to think about what happened in the last scene before immediately being thrown into the next one. But here the shots linger, for far too long. It doesn't feel right. Yuko then tries to remember what she ate yesterday, only to end her sentence with a question mark, unsure of her answer. She's been inside this elevator for so long, she's forgotten something as simple as what she'd eaten the day before. Although it is quite clear at this point that her idea of yesterday was probably days ago in reality. A fly flies in and out of Yuko's nose, but she barely reacts. She's aware of the fact that something happened in her body, but doesn't acknowledge what could have only been an incredibly uncomfortable sensation in almost any way. This shows how the girls' bodies have clearly started to become numb. A few more lingering shots of the elevator later, we get to see more of Mio, and how she somehow managed to fall asleep, if only for a brief second. The disturbing thing about this moment is how Mio's eyes never close. They stay open, and as dead as they were before. 
we get the second ever shot that shows all three girls in the elevator at the same time. And what comes next is something I'll never forget. Yuko, with her face on a very small square dead center on the screen, asks Mio, do you want to play Shiritori? This made everything in my head click together. Back in episode 6, there was a segment where Yuko and Mio play the game Shiritori, where you have to make up a word, and your partner has to make up another word based on the final syllable of the first word. Whoever can't make up a word from the other syllable loses. It is a very comedic scene with Yuko spelling her words incorrectly constantly, making Mio understandably frustrated. But whilst this scene is quite humorous, I fail to understand why they would bring up the concept of Shiritori again only a few episodes later. This show tends to bring up a lot of things it's done in the past, but the childish games between the main trio have never been one of those things. They've never rehashed a game up until this point. So what is the purpose of bringing up Shiritori again in this elevator scene? And that's when I realized that all of Nichijo is a delusion. The trio of girls have been stuck inside this elevator for the entirety of the show, living their supposed everyday lives inside their heads. Almost every single action, every word they've spoken, every situation they've gotten themselves into has been fake. In reality, they've been stuck inside this elevator, with nothing but each other, their thoughts, and the all-consuming darkness around them. This actually explains a lot about the lives of these three. Even though a bunch of the adventures they've gone on in the previous episodes have been grounded to realism, a lot of them have also been extremely over the top and defied all logic. They don't make sense, and they're a far cry from a realistic depiction of an average schoolgirl's life. But delusions, whether caused by hunger, isolation, or whatever else, can make the strangest things occur inside your head, making anything, including the wacky occurrences of the previous episodes, possible. Obviously, the girls had a life before being trapped inside this elevator, and therefore have memories that aren't just hallucinations. That's why I previously said that almost everything they've done has been fake. But even these memories have started to wither. This explains why we never usually get a good glimpse into the lives of these three. Usually a scene featuring someone from the main trio doesn't last long. These scenes are usually very quick and there's hardly any time to process what's happening in them half the time, and sometimes we're not even shown the aftermath of their actions. It all feels like we're being shown fractions of memories, and that's because that's what the more grounded scenes to the show so far have been. The girls' memories are slowly fading away as they rot inside the elevator, where time is moving at a normal, much slower rate, explaining the longevity of the scene. They're grasping onto these memories and trying to make sense of them inside their heads, but all that's left are pieces. Pieces of three lives that used to be. I always wondered why the first episode of the show throws us straight into the action, and why none of the three girls got proper backstories to get me invested in their characters. And that is because they have none, or well they used to. But now there is almost nothing left of their past, which is why we're only allowed glimpses into their worlds, instead of a thorough walkthrough of their lives from beginning to now. Back to the scene itself, Yuko and Mio start playing Shiritori, and don't seem to get anywhere, with Yuko starting out with the word orange but Mio not catching what her friend said, most likely due to being inside her own head, either trapped in another delusion or trying desperately to cling on to another memory. This feeling is amplified by the distortion that happens on screen once the word orange has been said. After Mio asks Yuko to repeat her word, she doesn't seem to remember anymore, showing us how she also gets easily lost in her deranged thoughts. Another moment that feels like it lasts forever, yet at the same time feels like it's fleeting later, Mio finally asks if she can say a completely different word to what she's supposed to. Yuko nor Mai have the energy to deny this request, and so Mio says the word eggplant. Surprisingly, this causes a reaction in Yuko, the first visible reaction we've seen so far. She starts snickering, like she's holding in a laugh. This feeling is also passed on to Mio, whose eyes light up for the first time in most likely forever. 
The joke is juvenile, and not even particularly a joke, but it's enough to snap the two from their nightmare, if only for a second. The two burst out in laughter over this eggplant joke, but soon the laughter turns from a glimmer of hope into something terrifying. In spite of all the laughter, the girls stay self-aware about their situation and exclaim that Mai seems dead considering she wasn't moved by the joke and that help still isn't coming despite their brief moment of happiness. The laughter starts sounding more insane, like it's the last desperate cries of two girls who know they are doomed to spend the rest of their lives, however long that is, inside an elevator that has become their coffin at this point. They know that soon this moment will be over, and they'll go back to being empty husks again, trying to cling on to the tiniest bits of hope whilst living their lives inside their heads, inside these episodes. The scene ends with a conclusion to the question of why Mai is laying down, as it's revealed that she's paralyzed. The moment with Yuko and the fly showed us how their bodies had started to become numb as time went by, and Mai is the aftermath of what happens when this strange process is finished. You'll be paralyzed, not able to do anything but talk and think, and who knows, maybe even that'll be taken away from them as time goes on. With this horrifying realization that all three girls will end up like Mai over time mixed in with the clearly desperate laughter makes for a deeply unsettling scene that abruptly ends with a shot of an apartment building. This shot is the saddest part of it all. Obviously, the show doesn't star just the three girls, but also many other characters who are still out there living their lives. And this shot of the apartment is here to represent the fact that although the girls are stuck in the elevator, unable to do anything about their situation, helpless and defeated, life goes on outside. The other characters live out their lives without knowing or caring about Yuko, Mio, or Mai. And that simple thought, this simple shot of an apartment building, was the most anxiety-inducing thing out of this whole ordeal. Throughout the many moments where I had time to think about the implications of this scene, I thought about what I would do in a truly dire situation like this, and couldn't come up with any other option than to give up. And the thought of having your life ruined by something to the point of you having to just be stuck inside your head whilst the rest of the world moves on and continues to thrive without you was awful. It doesn't matter what comes after this episode, since now I know that it'll all lead to the same outcome. The three girls dying inside the elevator, paralyzed and knowing that no one, not a single soul, will care. And that is what makes Nichijo and this elevator scene so goddamn terrifying to me. Don't mind the fact that two scenes later, they're back to their usual bullshit, and that I didn't include like 8,000 things from the show that contradict everything I said today. Ha 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 ha, you just got debated by the stupid video I wrote in two hours. Don't look into everything in your life too deeply, and just enjoy things for what they are every once in a while, because sometimes shit is just unpredictable and strange for no reason. But that's what makes life fun, right? Also, go watch Nichijou. It's a very good show. Bye!